Hey YouTube, here we go again. This is how to make a clock. Uh, the Sculptural Clock Project Part 2B. I decided I'm going to break this up into a third part. So we're going to have uh, 2A, 2B, and 2C. Okay. If you guys have been enjoying these videos, please hit like. Uh, please subscribe and select the bell notification. So you can make sure that you're up to date with all the videos and all the stuff that I'm releasing. I appreciate it. Um, all the equipment and tools and materials that I use in this project are going to be listed below in the description. So go ahead and check that out. That would be great. Um, so also you'll see here that I have a uh, picture of an oriental poppy. That oriental poppy is going to be uh, the bob on the clock, the part that swings there on the pendulum. I decided to do a low relief of an oriental poppy. and. Um, I kind of played around with about 10 different ideas or less, but the uh, Oriental Poppy is the one that I settled on. I realized that uh, in the original sculpture that I'm using this, this inspiration for, um, the Dream Lady, she's holding two uh, poppies above the children and the boy is actually kind of laying there slumped with a poppy laying at his side. So I thought that that would be a good image to use. and. Um, I found a great photo that I'm going to work from, so uh, that will be in its own video. I just want to take the time to say that uh, its own video, even though it's part of this project, and you'll see the uh, actual product produced from that video as part of this project, I'm not going to um, include that video as part of this series. Um, it'll be its own, but uh, keep an eye out for it. Uh, it should be good. Low relief sculpture. It's a really sweet thing to learn. Okay, so on this uh, sculpture, you can see that uh, what I've done is uh, worked on the feet, built up her feet a little bit, and just kind of changed her hip down a little bit. I changed the position of these two a little bit. Um, now that they're on the base, what I've decided to do is uh, keep them there. I've got them pretty much in the position that I want to keep them in. Uh, she was laying a little too low, so I kind of picked her up a little bit and I had to build up more material on uh, her underbelly there, uh, whichever side's laying there, and um, change the position of her arm and his legs a little bit, I'm sure. Uh, so when I remove the head, or make the heads removable, uh, that allows me to gain access to different detailed areas in the sculpture that would otherwise be really compromised to get into. Um, so I took a uh, two and a half inch screw and I put that up in the, in the uh, head and then found a sweet spot that that would go back into the body and miss the armature. Because when you go to push that in, you're going to get resistance from the armature itself. So kind of wiggle that around and once you find that sweet spot, I reposition the head and then take it off and pack clay in there to make sure that that screw doesn't bob or bobble rather around. And uh, this also gives you a great opportunity to build up the face in your hand instead of trying to sculpt it from down underneath. Uh, you know, since these are children, I just want to say that um, I'm making their faces look a little more full. Uh, it, you know, if I would make the heads maybe a, a little smaller than they are now and, you know, really draw in the cheeks, make them look a little more gaunt, they would start to look more uh, like adults. But I want to keep that adolescence. So I'm keeping the heads a little larger, the eyes down a little lower, cheeks a little more full. And uh, putting the hair on it, just roughing it in. Everything right now is just roughing it in. Uh, as a sculptor, what I've learned is, is if you get too precious in the details in the beginning, the rest of the sculpture doesn't really come together. So it's better to just keep laying down tracks. Uh, just go for it. Uh, you know, we're better editors than creators. Uh, one of my professors told me that, Linda Arbuckle. And so what I found is, is that if we are not really precious with the work that we're doing, um, we can keep moving forward very rapidly and then we can go back and edit our work. 
So if, if we're really busy spending the time creating, um, we can't really get to the editing part. So don't be precious, lay down the clay. And um, as soon as you see the clay laid down, you know what to do next. So that's a good thing. And then as you edit that, then you know what to do next. And you pretty much you'll realize that the sun went down and uh, you're late for dinner and uh, you know, you had a great day. Um, so at this part of the video, I'm building up the clothes. I didn't show all the footage there for building up the clothes. Um, but again, I'm just uh, packing clay on there in a very kind of uh, sketching type of way. And he is wearing a little sailor outfit. At least uh, it, it was probably a Boy Scout outfit, something of that nature. I, I think the Boy Scouts and uh, little sailor outfits were really popular. This statue was dedicated in 1922, October of 1922, I believe. So, um, you know, that was about the time of the Roaring Twenties and uh, right before the economic downturn. So, um, it was probably probably a little sailor outfit, so that's what I'm rolling with. And uh, that's the way it's gonna be. So it's draped over the back like that. Um, yeah, at this point you can see that I built up the back of the base also. I added one more layer of pink board there that gave me about another inch. And I put a layer underneath because it needed to be raised up. I realized that his foot is in the uh, field of the gear so that's part of having this clock maquette type of thing set up so I can uh, keep weighing it against what the clock will actually be once this is made and uh, I also realized a little bit later too another benefit of this maquette is that um, her drapery ends up bulging out into the field of the gear and I have to whittle back the, the drapery. Uh, actually, that she's laying on, it's not her dress. Um, so I'm not really getting too finicky about the details here underneath her body because what I want to do is eventually plug in all that negative space. As a mold maker, I don't like silicone going back into areas that I can't reach into. So uh, this makes the mold a lot easier to come off also by plugging up those negative spaces. And I think it works well with the subject matter here too because with the drapery and her dress, um, it's a great excuse to uh, fill in that negative space. And, you know, I'm not just packing it in there kind of willy-nilly. Um, I am actually uh, being a little more calculated about it and making sure that the viewer can still get a sense of the anatomy of the form. I'm not trying to hide any of the anatomy. It's a big mistake. Um, so there you can see that that negative space on this side is filled up. And you'll also be able to see that uh, on the, uh, let's see here, I'm not really sure, her arm, I don't know if this is gonna catch where I'm pointing to. But her arm's got a space between the back of her thigh and her uh, forearm there. That's all going to be filled up also. And then be behind her arm also. And under his leg, that's all going to get filled up. That's why this video is broken into three parts. Or will be a third part. Uh, as far as the sculpting is concerned. So the first part of this uh, series is uh, laying out the plans. So people understand what I'm uh, approaching here and what I'm planning to do <clears throat> as far as building one of uh, Clayton Boyer's clocks, Simplicity, and then putting my own sculpture on it. I'm going to do a couple other sculptural elements like the uh, bob face and maybe even the, the brackets, which, you know, when it comes off the wall, there's going to be supports that I think I'm going to make a little decorative. And. Uh, and then the second part of the video is going to be the sculpting of the piece that goes on top. Uh, the third part is going to be the casting and cutting out the wood pieces. And then the fourth part of the video is going to be assembly and doing the patina finish. 
uh, so we can see it all completed and functioning with the piece on top. So I was, you know, estimating, oh, a really tight uh, rack your brain timeline would be a month. And I'm thinking it's going to be more like a month and a half, two months. So just depending on how things are going uh, with this COVID epidemic, um, I've been ordering things to come to the house uh, through Amazon. Um, pause. So you see here at the back, uh, this is my uh, pseudo wall and I'm making sure it's squared with that level so that um, I know that my figures aren't going to be causing the piece to fit funny once it's all assembled. And uh, you can see I'm building up that back there and using that board as a brace. but. The video is wrapping up here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope watching it. If you guys got questions, please leave them in the comments. Again, hit like and subscribe. There's the finished product for the day. And uh, we'll, just, we'll just call it a day. You guys take care.